The thumbnail for this video was designed by Oscar Angel Art. I will leave a link to his Twitter. He is open for commissions now. Check him out. So Goku got a new form. What else is new? From beginning to end, Dragon Ball is the life story of Son Goku, and thus the focus will always go back to him, as much as it may begrudge some people. And you could really make an argument, especially in the western side of the world, that Vegeta is just as popular as Goku. So now that Goku has discovered the Ultra Instinct power, the mastery of self-movement, will Vegeta also achieve this power? I believe he will. And I have a lot of clues that have been given to us in Super based on the way that Super is progressing and the way that things have played out to where I fully do believe that Vegeta is going to figure out the mastery of self-movement. On this video, I'm going to tell you why. I, Vegeta, the prince of all Saiyans, orders you to subscribe and follow Geekdom 101 on these social media platforms. So like I said at the beginning of the video in the intro, the story of Dragon Ball is essentially the story of Goku, and of course he has friends that he makes along the way, and Vegeta would eventually become one of his friends. Now, the relationship between Vegeta and Goku as rivals from the very beginning of the series has always been that despite Goku being a low-level Saiyan, a low-level warrior determined by birth, he always was one step ahead of Vegeta when it came to their, I guess, distinctive powers. All throughout Dragon Ball Z, the rivalry was built up on the fact that Vegeta could not come to terms with the fact that Goku was always one step ahead of him, up until the very end of the series, when Vegeta pretty much admitted during the fight with Buu that Goku was indeed number one. Now, prior to that, there were a few moments where Vegeta did surpass Goku, but they were very limited in time and usually involving some kind of circumstance. For example, Goku having the heart virus. When that happened during his fight with 19, Vegeta was indeed stronger than Goku. So, I mean, that is a very key point there as far as Vegeta's power. Plus, when Vegeta would leave the Room of Spirit in time to go face off against Cell, he was at that time stronger than Goku but of course once Goku and Gohan emerged they would of course have vastly surpassed Vegeta. Now when we look at Dragon Ball Super and really the Dragon Ball Renaissance starting with Battle of Gods the movie the narrative between Goku and Vegeta's rivalry has somewhat changed a bit and what I mean by that is Vegeta has kept up with Goku pretty much every single time. In fact I would even dare to say that Vegeta has surpassed Goku many, many more times in Super than he did even in Dragon Ball Z. And they've really made it a point to hammer home that Vegeta and Goku throughout this series have been equals more often than not. Now, a lot of Dragon Ball fans, specifically Vegeta fans, are constantly, you know, concerned or constantly, I guess, upset that Vegeta does not get the spotlight. Well, the thing is that it's not really Vegeta's show, but I do feel that things have changed with Super. Now, there was an interview that is constantly being cited by Dragon Ball fans with Toriyama where he said that Vegeta was not one of his favorite characters to write. But that interview was way, way back. I mean, a long time ago. And you can tell with Dragon Ball Super that things had changed. In fact, there was an interview after Battle of Gods where he said if he were to make another movie, he might make Vegeta a centerpiece of that film. And when Resurrection F came out, no, Vegeta did not kill Frieza like we all wanted him to, but he definitely looked incredibly impressive against Vegeta and was equal to Goku. In fact, you could even say he may have been slightly stronger than Goku in Resurrection F, but that's entirely up to you to decide. The development behind Vegeta in Dragon Ball Super versus Dragon Ball Z has absolutely changed. No longer is Vegeta bloodthirsty and wanting to actually defeat and or kill Kakarot. Those days are far behind him. Now it seems like when Vegeta and Goku are, you know, trying to get stronger and fighting, they seem to work better together. In fact, Vegeta even cites this in Resurrection F to Frieza where he pretty much states that he needs Goku there to make him better. That's who drives him. And it's no longer a jealousy. It's more so a game but a game that they enjoy playing because they are, of course, the warrior race. Now, the first key point as far as why I think Vegeta will eventually learn the Ultra Instinct move 
started in Resurrection F, the arc, not the movie, when we found out in Dragon Ball Super that Vegeta started training with Whis before Goku, so he already had an edge. Vegeta training with Whis those extra few months before Goku joined him without question were important parts of Vegeta's training. In fact, Beerus states a few times in the series that Goku is not the only fighting genius Vegeta is too. Case in point, Battle of Gods, when Vegeta powered up after Bulma was slapped and he momentarily surpassed Goku just based on his pure rage. Now, by the end of the Resurrection F arc with Vegeta and Goku defeating Frieza, Things were kind of even, but then during the Universe 6 tournament, Goku brought back the Kaioken and adding the multiplier power of the Kaioken on top of Super Saiyan Blue, without question, Goku had surpassed Vegeta. But during the Trunks arc, things were a little bit different because there are several times in the Trunks arc where Vegeta was completely outperforming Goku, including the moments where Vegeta would go in the room of Spirit and Time, train, come out, destroy the entire room, and then he would stomp a mud hole in Goku Black. And I think the most obvious time when this was apparent, I would say, is when Goku was learning the Mafuba from Roshi while Vegeta trained. Even though the Mafuba was supposed to be much, much more important as far as stealing away the immortal Zamasu, even though it didn't work, Vegeta was training extremely hard to get stronger and showed it when he went to the future. Now, in between the Trunks arc and the Universal Survival arc, there's a lot of mystery there because it's sort of implied in a way that Vegeta was kind of slacking off in his training because he was so concerned over his pregnant wife, Bulma. And in those early episodes, it really did seem like Vegeta was becoming more of a husband than a fighter, kind of like Gohan, at least for a little while. But we really don't know what went on during those few weeks prior to the tournament actually beginning. It just kind of seemed like Goku was, you know, catching up or maybe even caught up to Vegeta. The narrative in Dragon Ball Super is now not just that Vegeta wants to surpass Goku. I mean, obviously he wants to do that, but it's a little bit beyond that. There are a few moments in the series where Vegeta states that he not only wants to surpass Goku, but he wants to be the strongest in all of the universes. I mean, he even says he wants to surpass Lord Beerus. And to me, I'm not saying he will surpass Lord Beerus right now, but I am saying that he certainly wants to surpass Lord Beerus. So even if he takes a momentary break, you know, to deal with his pregnant wife or whatever the case may be, he's the kind of guy who will get right back in that training room and catch back up to Goku quickly. Now, when it came to Dragon Ball Super Episode 110, one of the things that really caught my eye was at the end of the episode, after Goku had had that momentary brawl with Jiren and Jiren had knocked him away, Vegeta seemed quite curious, but not in a sort of rage kind of way. Vegeta was very, very calm during the entire thing. Even before the end of the fight, as he's watching Goku and Jiren fight, he makes comments about Goku's speed and how he's able to move so fluidly and doesn't really understand what's going on, but he didn't do it like he would back in the day. He did it much more calmly, which to me suggests there's a possibility that he is maybe not necessarily a practitioner of Ultra Instinct. Maybe he never got to the level that Beerus got to or that Goku got to in the fight with Jiren during his training with Whis, but I feel like inside Vegeta's head during that whole thing, he had to have remembered what Whis had been training him with for the past, you know, a few years or whatever the case may be. He had to have remembered the lessons that Whis taught him about letting your body parts, you know, think for themselves and fight for themselves Vegeta's the kind of guy who, like him or not, he will listen if it means to get stronger. And at the very end, he asked Goku, you know, what the heck was that? What did you just do? And it just seemed like Vegeta was, maybe it's the tone that Horikawa delivered the line, but it seemed like he was familiar with it. Again, maybe not like he knew how to do it, but I just find it hard to believe that a guy who's been training with Whis, who has seen what happened to Goku when he deflected the Genkidama and broke his limits by almost dying, couldn't figure out himself how to do this because his path as far as a fighter once we got to Dragon Ball Super as sort of mirrored Goku's in a way Goku's had some advantages like the Kaioken teleportation and things like that but Vegeta's always been right there with him and surpassed him many more times than he did in Z so I just again based on the entire narrative of Super and what Vegeta has been sort of written to be 
him playing second fiddle to Goku, even though Goku's the main character, to me seems a lot less so than it was in Dragon Ball Z. He's not just a sidekick at this point, at least I don't perceive him that way. So as a result of that, and as a result of everything that's gone on with, you know, Vegeta's desire to become the strongest and training with Whis, I find it very hard to believe that Vegeta is not going to be able to get the Ultra Instinct power at some point. Right, And the beautiful thing about Ultra Instinct that you have to remember is that it's not a race-exclusive transformation. So you don't have to be a Saiyan or a god to use this power. That's not ever stated. You could be a human. You could be a Namekian. I feel if you train with Whis for long enough and you figure out how to tap into it, it might take some people years. I mean, even Beerus hasn't mastered it yet. I think anybody can learn Ultra Instinct. And to me, that gives the writers a much easier, I guess you can say, uh, a much easier way out of, um, you know, when they write these characters. Because then they can actually give older characters power-ups if they decide to pass around Ultra Instinct to them. Which I hope does not happen, but it's an easy way to do it to where it would kind of make sense. Even though it's a little hard to swallow, it still makes sense based on what Ultra Instinct is in that it is not a race exclusive form but vegeta's next in my opinion so what do you think do you think vegeta's getting this transformation leave comments down below if you are new to geek the 101 punch that subscribe button and remember to hit the bell because youtube is weird sometimes that way you can get notified whenever i upload a video onto this channel. I have done three in-depth analysis videos on Ultra Instinct. I will link those in a moment. Check those out if you haven't. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.